Reverend Milton Williams, welcome to our show. Thank you. You have been listening in. What do you think till now? Well, <laughs> we've had a full conversation, you know? Um, and if, if, I'm, if I'm to categorize a theme, the theme is just really uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Uncertainty about uh, who will win the election, uncertainty about issues related to civil unrest and violence, um, uncertainty uh, which was not discussed, I did not hear discussed, about where this nation goes in relates to a uh, relationship to the COVID-19 uh, right. pandemic. I mean, so it's just a lot of uncertainty. Right, we'll talk about that. But first of all, uh, we met almost 20 years ago in New York here on the site of 9-11, uh, the terrorist attacks uh, on that time on uh, Ground Zero. And you were working there as a priest in a church near Ground Zero and you were helping victims. Yes. And there was a a photo made of you, we can see it here, which in this day and time is really interesting to see because of the trauma of that day, the drama, and you wearing a, a mask, naturally, which you are doing today, all of us as well. Yes. What is the difference between 9-11 uh, and this uh, pandemic of COVID-19 today? There, there is stark difference. Um, following the events of 9-11s, uh, in 2001, there was a great sense of, of uh, coalition, of people coming together. I mean, I, I had lived some years before 9-11 here in New York and left years, years later. Uh, but I clearly remember there was this sense of cohesion, this sense of caring for one neighbor caring for another neighbor. I remember clearly it was maybe the day or after where President George Bush came and stood on the, on the heap of, of, of the collapsed uh, building. And uh, even he, a Republican, with all the controversy that was going around surrounding his presidency, um, there wasn't the same kind of vitriol that we, that we feel here and now with, with politics. How does that work out in your church? Because in North Carolina, being in North Carolina, do you have people in your church, one group is, who's voting for Trump and the other ones for Biden? Indeed we do. <laughs> but North Carolina is in the South and in the South people are very polite. So you don't talk very about Very polite. It? I mean, we are very, I mean, we, we, we tread very carefully about it because Oh, well, first of all, I mean, this, this sense of politeness and one not, not wanting to hurt your neighbor's feelings. Mm -hmm. but, but, but even beyond that, it, it is a difficult thing to deal with because, I mean, with, even within household, I mean, you could have one spouse who's supporting Trump and another spouse mm -hmm. who's, supporting, who's supporting Biden, and it creates tension. You have friends for decades, for decades, and, and it's creating tension within relationships. Do people from your congregation come to you and say, for example, a wife, my husband is voting for Trump and I don't know what to do with this situation? I have heard such stories, yes. Yeah. I have. And it's, 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 it's um, and, and they're coming because this is simply just not about politics. I mean, this is about relationships. I mean, it's, it's about interpersonal relationships. And at the deepest sense, I mean, that's, I mean, it's about what binds us together. It's relationships that really define us as, as humans and, and, and keeps us together uh, and gives us our truest, deepest sense of humanity is, is how we connect via relationships. Is it still possible in these times? I believe it is. You know, I, you know, I, I want to believe it is. Mm -hmm. I believe it is if we, if, if we really go deep within ourselves, if we really seek to understand what's at the core of what brings us together and binds us together as, as, as neighbor one to another. I but, believe it is. But if you do your sermon on Sunday morning, can you speak your mind? Can you say how you uh, look upon this situation? First of all, let me ask you, are you a Democrat? Did you vote already? I, I am a I, I'm a registered Democrat, and yes, I have voted already. You voted for Joe Biden? You pronounce that I voted for Joe Biden, and I'll agree. I won't disagree with you. No, no, but, but I mean, if you do the sermon in the church, can you tell your congregation, this is where I stand, and this is what I uh, that's, think? That's not my position in my congregation. I mean, uh, as, as an Episcopalian here in the United States, coming out of a deep Anglican tradition, if there's one, if there's one thing we hold dear in this Anglican tradition is what we call the via media, the middle way. Mm. 
And, and how do we, how do I, as a, as a spiritual leader of my community, how do I stand in this middle way so that I can hold people wherever they may be on either side? And so that's my, that's my challenge. So how, how difficult is that because you're walking a tight rope? It is. It is. But it's what I believe it's necessary to hold a community together. I mean, I mean we, are, we are seeing division and, and, and chaos in relationships like, like I have not experienced um, th th that I can remember. And, and the tension, the angst that we are all living under now. And so, so how, do you, how do you hold that space in the middle, that, how, that how safe do you do space? It? How do you do it? Well, first, it helps if I, if I feel myself to be in a centered, safe space myself, mm -hmm. um, emotionally, uh, spiritually, uh, to find a place of, there is, a, there is an old um, American hymn, there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. That, that quiet centered space uh, that is sheltered from all the buffer of the, the turmoil that's going around. And so when I myself am in that space, then it helps me to, to be that icon of middle way, that icon of space for other people. You are uh, an African-American priest. Uh, your congregation, are they African-American too or white? Predominantly white. White. Predominantly white, yes. So how did it look upon you? Uh, well, well, as their first African-American priest in this, in this congregation, I will first say um, they know they have a good priest, so they love me and I love them. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm very confident of that. Um, and because they know I love them, they know as their pastor, as their, as their priest, and I give my life for them. As, as Jesus talks about the shepherd giving his life for the sheep. And, and there is this, this, this parallel between priest, pastor, and shepherd. Uh, as a matter of fact, the pastor is the shepherd. And so they know my deep care for them. And, you know, love is, is, is the greatest thing we have. And yeah. that carries us through. But, for example, uh, would you march or demonstrate during a Black Lives Matter Demonstration. I would and I have. You did. I have because those matters are, I mean, just because it, I can stand in the middle way, I can stand in the via media and still maintain my personal sense of integrity, my personal sense of oughtness, you know, what I ought to do for what I feel is the greater good. And so when I'm in those places of a Black Lives Matter, I'm standing there as my, as, as an individual, as Milton, not Father Williams, mm. you see. And so I'm there in my space because for me that is important in my, for my sense of integrity. Do you think your um, congregation looks upon you as an African-American man? Um, they, there may be some tension in that. Um, you know, Green, I, I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina. Can you give an example? Um, um, there are, when I first came, when I first arrived, even before I arrived at my parish, so there was a photograph, of, a picture of me announcing the new priest is about to arrive. Um, and it was announced that, uh, you know, so they wouldn't be surprised that, you know, he's, he's African American. And a woman sees my picture on the counter um, in the church office. She sees my picture and she, she looks at the picture and she says, I thought you said that he was African American. And the parish administrator says, well, he is. And she says, oh, no, no, he's, he's mixed race. Yes, you see. Um, and, and, and her response is, I know, because my grandson is mixed race. So you see, it is this, this issue of race. Um, it's, it's there. Is and it? again, the question is, so how do I stand in this, how do I stand in this? Fully aware of who I am, mm -hmm. fully aware that um, when I walk out of this building and I walk down the street and if I'm stopped by police, the police doesn't see me as a mixed race person. He sees a black man walking down the street. And therefore my identity, my sense of, my sense of who I am is constructed by what the world sees. We have been talking in this show with uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali who, who said, I don't like the Democratic Party and Joe Biden because of this wokeness. 
uh, and that's Black Lives Matter is is one of the. Is a, it is a part of it is it is, it is a part of this 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 shifting um, consciousness, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm not, as your former guest has said, I'm not so, so sure uh, that America is as woke <laughs> as it's claiming to be. Mm. Um, I think this is a convenient time. I think it is a convenient hashtag. You, you know, there are many hashtags. Um, I would say that black, um, uh, defund the police is a black, is, is a hashtag, you know. Um, uh, woke is a, is a hashtag. And I think many people are being uh, caught up in, in, I mean, how, how do you really get to the root of a matter? How do, you, how do you express an ideology, a philosophy? How do you express a theology? Even how do you express God and a hashtag? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the world and the culture we're living in now, people are so wanting something convenient, so a hashtag to hang a, a thought on without going deeper to ask, so what's really at the heart of the matter? What, mm -hmm. What's really here? What, What's really happening? Let me ask you for the heart of the matter. If President Trump wins on Tuesday or the days after, uh, what do you think will become of this country? You know, I don't know. That's another, that's just a, another uncertainty. Um, I, I, immediately following, um, I can imagine there being some civil unrest. That's well within my, my scope of imagination. There will be some civil unrest, and I am not certain that there will not be some violence connected to the civil unrest. I'm hoping that does not happen, but if you look at the, the course of recent events related to, uh, to, to, to black men being shot by police recent, um, it's, it's hard to imagine, it's hard not to imagine that, that possibility happening uh, next week. And, uh, that saddens me. Where will you be on election day? Um, <laughs> well, I won't be where I was last year. Last year, I was in a, I was in a, a, a like a watch party, you know, waiting for for the election to be, um, uh, to be announced or uh, the winner to be announced. Um, I'll be at home, very quiet, just very, very quiet, and I will be and, and prayerful, very prayerful. I mean, if ever there was a need. For, for people to come, regardless of your religious tradition or non-religious tradition, to center in and just be mindful of the need for peace and calm and respect. I mean, it's now. And I believe that's, you know, Tuan, I, I'm not a politician. I, I'm not a historian. Um, I'm not a, a sociologist. I, I am a priest. And if there's one thing I do know how to do, that is pray and to lead my people, my congregation, um, into that place of prayer. Milton Williams, thank you very much for being here in Beethoven. You're welcome.